Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Back to Ashes. My name is Phoenix. If you are new here and you enjoy what you are hearing, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and then set your notification bell to all so you won't forget every time I upload the video, which happens to be daily. If you would like to learn how to become a member of the channel or would like to tip me with a cup of coffee, that information can be found down below in the description box. With all of that being said, it is now time to go back to ashes. For once we arise from the ashes, we are a bigger, brighter, stronger, and a happier person every day. Sit back, relax, kick back, grab a snack, or tuck in and get warm, and prepare for your dose of vocal melatonin entitled True Ouija Stories. Right after this intro, there will be an ad. I'll read the first story, there will be an ad. And after that, there will be no more ads within this video. Disclaimer, this video is for educational and entertainment purposes. One night, me and my coworkers decided to play with a Ouija board outside of work. We talked to a girl named Quinn who said she was a demon. She seemed pretty cool till towards the end of talking to her. We decided we needed to head home because it was like 2 a.m. But she wouldn't let us say goodbye until we promised that if we ever used the Ouija board again, that we would talk to her. About a week later, the place where we worked caught on fire. So a few days later after that, we go to the lake and use the Ouija board again and ask for Quinn. We asked if she started the fire and she told us that she did. Then it seemed like Quinn got scared and overpowered because the board started acting up and it started spelling out Zozo and started counting backwards. We quickly said goodbye and moved the planchette to goodbye. About two weeks later, I was driving to my friend's house I shouldn't mention that the friend was a girl I was seeing at the time, and she was cheating on me and using me, too. I did not know this at the time, by the way. I guess Quinn knew because she seemed mad, protecting and jealous when me and my friends mentioned this girl's name the first time we used the Ouija board. So, on the way to her house, I hydroplaned and flipped my truck. I have to add the Ouija board is in the truck. Some people driving down the road stopped to help get the door open, and I climbed up and out. When the cops arrived, they made sure I was okay, and said that they had to write me a ticket, just because of the accident. I don't have the ticket anymore because this happened about four years ago, but the address site of the accident was Route 666, Virginia. I used Session, quite a strong aversion to Ouija boards, which started I don't know when, and ended sometime around the age of 16 or 17, when I used one for the first time. Fast forward another one to two years, and my cousin and I had been using that board probably nearly every weekend, at least one, if not both nights, since the first time. It had become one of our favorite pastimes. Sometimes we'd have other friends join us, but it was always at least us. We took it very seriously. We were as careful as we knew how to be, always had good results, and nothing bad ever came out of it. Well, outside of our first experience, but that's another story. Other than that one time, however, we had plenty of both cool and or creepy experiences, but two stand out above all the others. One, I wouldn't call a positive experience because of the insinuated nature of the speaker who came through, but neither was the experience itself inherently negative. The other, I wouldn't call a negative experience, again, just because of the nature of the speaker who came through. But neither was the experience itself inherently positive. We haven't used a Ouija board since and have kids now, so 
we probably never will. To this day, nearly half of my lifetime later, I still don't know what to make of either experience. In the first of these two instances, we spoke the link with a being that would not give us its name, but much to our amusement, told us to simply call it Chewy. Yes, that's really what it said. You heard that correctly, and it's true. This Chewy went on to share some highly questionable and objectionable things, and we weren't put off because we had come to suspect we weren't talking to our usual sort of speakers, and we wanted to get answers. When we asked what we were speaking to, the board spelled out D E M O and then stopped. We all looked at each other, knowing full well, as you do now, what Chewy was spelling out. We closed the line and ended the session as we always took care to do, if not a little more eagerly than usual. Sometime later, days, weeks, months, I can't remember, we were at it again. This time, we spoke with a being who was a self-proclaimed angel, earthbound for reasons that were either never fully explained or which had been partly forgotten, which included being my guardian angel. They named themselves Sek, which at the time meant next to nothing to me noted. Thereafter, we couldn't seem to get anyone else on the board. Eventually, sometime between the sessions, the board warped, and we got out of the practice of using it, and I never saw the board or the Oracle planchette thing in the same place again. Much more recently, the thought of this came to mind out of the blue, and I tried looking it up to see if it really was a thing. But the only thing I could find was Sekhmet, the Egyptian goddess. I have no formal knowledge of demons, angels, or deities, especially in a magical sense or on a personal level. Plenty of people claim to have contacted demons who specifically named themselves. But what are people's experiences with angels and or deities? I'd love to hear your feedback. Warning, I'm religious, so I might have some bias, superstition, and skepticism in here. I apologize in advance. So, I'm not quite sure where else to share this story. It's not exactly scary, but I've had my moments. So, a few years ago, my freshman year of college, I got in with a friend group that was really into doing the Ouija board for fun. We'd have nights where we'd be in the basement of the dorm, snacks and blankets all around us in the study room, just summoning ghosts for shits and giggles. Now, it doesn't exactly help with the fact that the town our school is in is nicknamed Second Salem because there was rumored witchcraft practicing like a hundred years ago here. If that's true, nobody really knows, but... That doesn't stop urban legends about a haunted water tower near campus popping up, or an actual club on campus being a paranormal investigation team. I digress. So, the first time I went on the board, I was given rules that I don't entirely know if they were true, mainly that you have to move the planchette a clockwise motion a few times and then stop, like opening a gate, I think. I don't know, but it seemed to work. Long story short, my first time on the board, I met a protection spirit I had had for several years but didn't know about. He was named Adam. He gave a description of himself and stuff, and he was the first one on the board for every session I was on. I should also note, we never played alone. Later sessions would lead to people meeting family members. I'm still skeptical on whether or not that was real. 
I'm still shaken up by some family members' deaths and wanted nothing more than to talk to them again. I got to talk to someone claiming to be this family member and, for the record, asking them questions only they would know garnered the correct responses. A good part of me is skeptical on this. However, because this could not just be wishful thinking or something sinister in disguise. Speaking of sinister, holy shit, we got a lot of demons. I almost got possessed twice. The first time, everyone went to get food and I decided to stay and watch our stuff. While I was alone, despite being by the heater, I was ice cold. I also felt tired and like I couldn't get up from my chair. We had asked the board when everyone came back, as I apparently looked super tired, and the spirit on the board said I was almost possessed, and we should stop for the night. We had some real idiots in the group who pressed onward. I eventually left, putting some salt I had under my door, just in case. The second time, I watched a possession of some kind. I was on the board, and a demon. We had two main ones, Nim-Nim or Amom. Thankfully, never the Z one. Was taunting us. We noticed my one friend was super quiet, and we looked over to see her rocking back and forth and staring at the ceiling, unresponsive. We quickly said goodbye on the board and shook her out of it. She was fine and had no idea what was happening. We got on again after taking a break, and I suddenly began to feel like I was seeing out of someone else's eyes. I felt dizzy and like my body wasn't in my control. I snapped out of this trance somehow, and my friend said I wasn't responding for a good four to five minutes. We didn't play the board for at least two weeks after that shaken up. My final fear story is a two-parter. Part one. I was on the board with a friend and suddenly started getting dizzy. I saw a figure in front of me that was a little girl with like a black veil on. One of her eyes was like infected, but it was all black with like cracks all across her face. She looked freaking terrifying and for some reason, I couldn't bring myself to look her in the face. I snapped out of it thanks to my friend shaking me and said I wanted to stop for the night. Part 2 Later at night, a friend of mine saw the exact same figure watching him as he slept. Same creepy little girl, same freakish face. 100% sure it was a demon of some kind. Those are my little anecdotes. I haven't played with the board in maybe a year, I think. I'm interested on people's opinions on my experiences. It's some of the most crazy things I've ever dealt with. Oh, and before I forget, there was something about the demons attaching to us or others with poor mental health. I supposedly had at least one with me and had migraines, increased depressive thoughts, and like a clawing feeling on my shoulder. I couldn't see any marks or anything, so I probably just had a shoulder ache. I'd love to hear any feedback or input. I'm sure this is pretty vanilla, but it's not like I can go share this with anyone. I'm posting this because I want to clarify that this is a true experience. So, I'm extremely skeptical about the paranormal, and this experience kind of blew my mind, so I thought I'd like to share it. I used to live in a building that had eight separate flats in it. I didn't interact much with the other people in the building, except for the guy who lived next door to me, one of the nicest guys I've ever met and the guy who lived directly below me. 
I immediately noticed when I moved in that that guy below me was the opposite of a considerate neighbor. He blasted music at all hours of the night, sometimes for 24 hours straight. Honestly, though, I could sleep through a hurricane and it genuinely didn't bother me that much. Except for the fact it was super rude. Anyway, I opted to keep the peace to not mention it. The guy who lived next door to me, Gary, approached me one day asking if I was okay about the guy below me playing his music so damn loud, because even Gary could hear it in his flat. I told him I wasn't too bothered by it, and Gary said he was relieved because he didn't want me confronting the guy on my own. I'm a 20-year-old girl, and Gary was about 50, so I think he was just looking out for me. I asked why, and he said that he'd met that guy years beforehand through work, and he'd introduced himself as John. But when he moved into the flat, he introduced himself as Wes. Gary had gone back to one of the other guys who'd worked with him to double check, and he said he'd switch between the two personalities regularly. So he obviously had some form of personality disorder. I'm hardly an expert on stuff like that, but I'd hear Wes, that's the name my boyfriend and I ended up using to refer to him, yelling quite a lot, and I wondered if maybe he played his music to drown voices out or something. I might be way off the mark. Like I said, I'm not an expert. Anyway, one day I find a note taped to my door. Stop your constant banging. I can't sleep. You can tell from the handwriting that it's been scrawled in a fury. Now, I was at work 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. And when I got home, I pretty much sat down on my sofa all night. Obviously, I made tea and went to the bathroom too, but I definitely wasn't constantly banging. Anyway, Wes took it upon himself to start banging on his roof, my floor, whenever he felt like it, or felt like I was being too loud. And that's how I know it wasn't me, because he'd bang at the most random times when I hadn't even moved from the sofa for over an hour, or sometimes at like 4 a.m. when I'd been in bed for hours. My boyfriend knocked on his door a few times, but he never answered. This is where it gets really creepy. I don't necessarily believe in ghosts, to be completely honest. So, I never thought much of the weird noises I heard in that flat. I was living in a building with seven other people, after all. In hindsight, my boyfriend said some weird things in his sleep, too, but he sleep talks random nonsense regularly anyway. Despite me not believing in ghosts, I do find it super interesting, and I have a Ouija board, which I occasionally try out. One night, my boyfriend and I decided to use it. We'd already used it once before in that flat, but nothing happened. This time, however, it did. Mostly, it was moving to random letters that made no sense, but I was still feeling a weird vibe. The candles kept flickering, which I know sounds weak, but I just had a really weird feeling about the situation for some reason. Anyway, then the board says F-I-N-D-M-E. So I naturally ask, where are you? And it says W-E-S-H-I-D. B O D Y. Like an absolute idiot, I read that as Weshed Body and hastily concluded that the board was talking nonsense, said goodbye, and turned the lights on. To be completely honest, I was getting really freaked out. I thought I could hear things moving, and I didn't want my boyfriend to see how creeped out I actually was because he believes in ghosts. And I'm always super skeptical about it. Only afterwards, set on the sofa, did I realize I had actually been saying 
Wes hid body. When the realization hit me, I told my boyfriend, whose reaction was, Oh, I see. Very funny. <laughs> nice try. To this day, he thinks I was pushing the board and played dumb to make it seem realistic. But it wasn't. Out of curiosity, I tried to look up local murders or disappearances, but I couldn't find anything. I also can't find any social media for Wes or anything of interest about him online. I managed to find out his real name. I still don't know what happened or why that board said that. I'm convinced there's a logical explanation. Subconscious movements, maybe. But it freaked me the hell out. On a side note, how fuming would that ghost have been at me sitting there saying, Weshed body? That makes no sense. I moved out of that flat a couple months ago. Not gonna lie, I've not used that Ouija board since. So, before I begin, I just want people to know something about my dad. He grew up in the ghetto, and in a very bad side of the town we grew up in. He saw a lot of things a kid should never see. Without getting into details, there's not a single thing that scares my dad anymore. He's a very old school, thuggish and tough loving type of person. My dad is one of the most toughest and badass people I've ever met. But when he told this story, I've never seen my dad so scared in my entire life. This happened when my dad was a teenager. Specifically, he was 17. My dad was hanging out with one of his friends, Carlos. Coincidentally, the same name of me and my dad. Me being the third. At a levee, chilling with a group of friends. My dad decides he needs to take a leak and trails off far from his friends. While pissing, he notices a house across the levee with someone standing outside of it. He said the house looked like the house from the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, to give you an idea. When looking at the house, my dad walked toward it because he saw the person looking straight at him and coming close to him. When the person finally got close enough to my dad, my dad made out a sort of shadowy, devilish figure and ran back to his group of friends. He was so scared that he got in his car and drove back home, telling his friends he needed to go home because his mom needed him there. The next day, my dad goes to Carlos's house to hang out with him. Carlos asks my dad why he had left. My dad explained to him what he saw, a figure at the end of the levee, and felt like it was an evil so he decided to leave before anything else happened. Carlos tells my dad of another haunting that happened to him, saying that he could hear kids crying and laughing at the same time. Now at the time, Carlos was a huge stoner, and my dad believed it was the weed and wasn't convinced. While Carlos was trying to convince him that what he heard was real, my dad noticed the leaves started falling gracefully, one by one. Keep in mind, this is during the summer, and the leaves were falling very slow, which is a weird occurrence. When my dad pointed out the leaves, he said that he then saw a white van, the same van that apparently tried to kidnap his sister and himself moved so fast but so slow you could see it, but made no sound whatsoever. Side note, I explained to him that it was death riding on a white pale horse, and he did say him and his friend were caught slipping by a rival gang group earlier that day. My dad, being very creeped out by the random occurrences, remembers he has a Ouija board he bought for his brother-in-law, who was deported before he could give it to him. 
and decides to dust it off and use it. This is where the creepy stuff kicks in. Carlos and my dad set up the Ouija board and started to ask it questions. The first thing that was asked was, did Carlos really hear kids crying and laughing or was it the weed? The board says L I S T E N. My dad then says he actually heard kids crying and laughing at the same time and it was genuinely disturbing. My dad, what's happening to those kids? D Y I N G. What? 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 How? M U R D E R. Who was the oldest? Fifteen. And youngest? Eight. Carlos is exclaiming that my dad is doing some voodoo magic and tells my dad to cut it out. My dad swears it isn't him, then asks the board to prove itself that the spirit is really there. The board then spells C-A-T-S. My dad says, cat? My dad then says that he sees a bunch of cats come out of nowhere, meowing like crazy, while there was one black cat standing out. My dad asks, where is the spirit? And the board says, it's the black cat. My dad and Carlos are now tripping balls and ask the board, what does it want? Again, the board spells L-I-S-T-E-N. After a few moments of silence, my dad and Carlos hear a loud ping and bolt away. They come back to the board to see a nail with a perfectly tied black ribbon around it. They put the board away until the next day, where their friend, Heman, comes over. Now, it's important to know that Heman had a pager and a red car. So, the next day, Heman comes over and my dad and Carlos explain to him what happened. Heman doesn't believe them, so they decide to pull out the board. My dad and Carlos ask the same questions. The cats come back, and they hear the children laughing and dying. Heman then yells at my dad, saying he thinks they're both playing tricks on him. So, my dad then gets the idea to get the board to spell out the address of Heman considering my dad and Carlos did not know the exact address of Heman. Heman agrees. The board then goes, one, two, three. And before the board could spell the last number, Heman slaps the board away, yelling at my dad and Carlos, saying whatever trick they were playing, they needed to stop. Just then, Heman's pager goes off, and it spells out, 4311, which for those who are confused, spells out hell. Then the board says A N S W E R. Heman refuses and leaves their place without anything else occurring. After he leaves, my dad decides to get this whole group of friends later that night. They all get together, and the same thing happens to the cats the kids crying and laughing, and even Heman's pager goes off again. However, my dad asked it two additional questions. One, is it the same figure he saw at the levee? And two, what did it want from him? It answered, one, Y E S. Number two, Y O U R. Oh, you L. My dad freaked and tried to say goodbye to the board, but it kept saying no. After a bit back and forth, the board piece moves itself, swishing around in a circle. It blows out the candles lit around the board, and it goes completely silent. Then all of a sudden, 
there was a weird screeching sound. And as soon as it stops, the same loud ping from both times happen. And they find another large needle with a black tie wrapped around it. They then decided to call it a night and left home. The next morning, my dad sees that his car has a flat tire and decides to take it to the shop. The guy who worked on his car said he needs a completely new tire. When the guy showed my dad the tire, there were three claw marks on the tire that looked like if Wolverine himself had slashed the tire. It suddenly clicked that the screeching from last night was from the tires. After that day, my dad swore on his life to never touch a Ouija board or involve himself in anything paranormal ever again. Edit. Had to clarify my dad's age so it doesn't seem like he's driving around when he's 12, when he really was just a teenager. Hi everyone, this is my first time telling this story. I hope to get some help, and I'll try to explain my situation as well as possible. Please ask if anything is unclear. A short background to my life. I've always been a relatively normal girl. I've always had friends. I'm just about to finish a higher education. I never had financial problems. I've never been seriously ill. Things just always went on smooth with my life, eh, more or less. I never believed in the paranormal, but things that has happened to me this past year have made me doubt that. I'll start from the beginning, and I'll try to only share the most necessary information since I don't want to put myself. About a year ago, me and my boyfriend spent a night alone in a pretty big house. We were sick of just watching movies or TV, so we decided to think of something different to do. The other night, we had been watching a horror movie about a Ouija board, and we had been talking about that none of us have ever tried one. Since neither of us believed in the paranormal, we decided to try it just for fun. We were kind of silly about the whole thing, making it something romantic instead of something serious. We turn off all the lights in the house, and I decided to grab a piece of paper to make a homemade board. I googled a picture of the board and copied it. My boyfriend turned on some candles, and I did a quick Google on how to do the whole thing. As I remember it, I just click on the first link and read that we should take a shot glass, place it on the board, and with a finger on it, we should make the infinity sign for 10 times and then stop. I think I stopped my research here somewhere, so this was all we did. We were sitting opposite of each other and we started asking some questions. Nothing happened for the first 10 to 15 minutes we were holding our finger on the glass. The mood kind of left us and my boyfriend started to get a bit silly. The weather outside was pretty bad this night, and the wind made a sound in the house wall outside. At this point, my boyfriend started laughing and saying, <laughs> It's probably Zozo. Zozo, is that you? He remembered the name from the movie we had watched. I laughed at his efforts to scare me, and I also said something regarding this. I do remember saying the name Zozo out loud, though. We had lost the mood at this point, and we started talking about doing something else. We just removed our fingers from the glass and started cleaning up. I took the paper of the board and started folding it because I didn't want the house owners to see it in the trash can. It was not our house, by the way. But in the last moment, decided to bring it into our room instead of putting it in our personal trash. Just because I was a bit embarrassed by the whole thing and wanted to make sure no one else saw it. That evening went on, and eventually we went to bed. The next morning, I was about to start cleaning our room a bit, and I came across the paper of the board. 
It was clean and open. The foldings I had made the other night were gone. I asked my boyfriend about it, but he didn't take it seriously. Again, laughing and saying, <laughs> Maybe Zozo wanted to talk more to you. I grabbed the paper and look at it, and in the corner was the word, yes, written. The text was smeared out like it had spilled water on it or something. I couldn't remember us spilling anything on that paper. We had a glass of wine when we were doing this, but this was no wine stain. It looked more like water that had been spilt on it. I forgot about the whole thing and moved on with our lives, and I didn't think about the whole thing until last month. The thing is that, after this session, my life has changed. A lot. And only for the worst. I don't want to give you any details, but I can give you an overview. My studies, that always went well, started going incredibly bad. I started losing relationships. My relationship to my partner was broken apart. I got very, very bad financial problems. Everything that had always worked out for me just stopped working completely. In addition, more or less, everything that could possibly go wrong for me did go wrong. To the point where people around me have started asking me where all of this bad luck is coming from. I take it pretty seriously when other people start to see things like that, since humans tend to feel more sorry for themselves than others do. I think you know what I mean by this. Bad habits I had have increased in intensity, and this bad luck I have is insane. Every teeny tiny thing that could possibly go wrong just goes wrong. I'm often sick. You just have to take my word on this. This past year has been the worst in my life by far for a normal person. The things happening to me should not be happening. We have a dog that very often just barks into nothing in our home. My boyfriend is often making jokes saying that, Ooh, we have a ghost. The other month, I decided to think about this a bit more. And I googled a bit. As I now understand it, we did a lot of things wrong that night, and I do mean a lot, especially when saying the name Zozo out loud so many times. I also started remembering that thing about the piece of paper, aka the homemade board. It was just very, very strange since I so clearly remember that I was folding it to hide the text in the trash. We also didn't finish up correctly. We just stopped. I've never been open to these things, but this bad luck in my life has gone so far that I'm open to anyone telling me the Ouija board session we have had has something to do with it. Worth mentioning is that my partner also experienced this to a certain extent. Things have been happening to him too, but not as much. It's mostly just me. Since I don't have a lot of knowledge about this, I'm turning to you all. Could it be possible that something is attached to me? What could I do? I don't know how long I can take this. This has to stop. Please give me all of your thoughts and tips. I really appreciate it. I guess I should start with giving some backstory. My name is Melanie. I moved into my house about seven months ago, and it was a disaster. I'm not the richest person, so there was a deal struck, and I cleaned the house out from the previous tenants. I hadn't seen the place before I moved in. It was a desperate situation I would rather not dive into. When I moved in, there was expired canned food and expired candy waist-high from the living room to the kitchen. 
shit and used condoms all over the floor. Yeah, it was that bad. Coal stove. I'm a single mom. I have no clue what I am doing. Very old, rigid, together house. So the first thing I noticed was that in the basement, there's a tunnel dug out that has a small turn. It's not very long. That leads to a small, circular, tiny room. Only way I can explain it, maybe a child could stand up in it, but I'm 5'2 and I couldn't. All that there is is a light hanging from the middle of the ceiling. This is all just rock and cement. The only way I can explain the light is in the brave little toaster. When they go to the store with the other appliances and that big lamp that sings. Remember that? Let me Google quickly. Pendant light. I can't decide if that's cool or dumb. I digress. Okay, so then I get this weird video footage cut through my recording. I was using Facebook Messenger. I was sending a video of me playing my game on my laptop to my friend. It was only on my phone. It took up all the screen, even my time and notifications. I checked all Facebook stories and opened tabs and nothing. I have no idea where this is and I have never seen it before. It didn't appear on the computer, only on my phone. Okay, so here's what you've all been waiting for. Me and my 15-year-old son were setting up the attic for his room. He recently decided to move up to the attic. It was always used for storage. There's a tiny cubby hole that we were clearing out. To the far left wall, the small end of the wall, was carpeted. Thinking that was really strange, I ripped the carpet down and found boards and there was a crack in between two of them. So I used the flashlight and looked inside, and there was a whole other room, bigger than the cubby hole that we were already in. Of course, me and him kicked the boards down like beasts. All that was in there was wooden shutters, wooden boards, pipes, and debris, and a lot of insulation. I saw a piece of board that looked strangely smooth and out of place, so I flipped it over, and it was a Ouija board. I've done some research then, and it is a 1939 William Fold mystifying oracle board. I did not find the planchette with it, but I found that weird triangle thing. My 15-year-old son said, fuck this, I'm out and left me there to be possessed. Since then, I have put the Ouija board on the mirror of my dresser as a decoration. Everybody keeps telling me to get rid of it and burn it. I don't want to. I don't feel anything evil from it. I kind of really feel a connection with it. I'm not trying to be all Reagan Captain Howdy here, but it's the truth. I also forgot to mention the weird things that have been happening. Normal things like toys going off or things going missing and reappearing. Recently, me and a friend who is frequently here have been seeing things. People. I saw a man twice. I can chalk the first one up to my mind playing tricks on me. It was a split second he was there. I looked at my phone and he was gone. But a week later, I was driving down a dark back road that is really windy. I live out in the boonies where there's nothing but woods everywhere. I was driving and of course paying attention because I had my son in the car. Not that I don't pay attention when it's just me. And there was nothing there. But when I looked in the rear view mirror and I looked, three separate times within the span of a few seconds. Not ten feet away was a man slowly walking away from the car in the middle of the side of the street I was driving on. He came out of absolutely nowhere, and there's no way he could have been there that fast. 
not as close to the car as he was. He had a fedora bowler hat looking thing on and what looked like a suit jacket, and he was walking very slowly. I saw him three separate times when I looked into the rearview mirror, and then he was gone. My 12-year-old son says he did not see him. He didn't see the other man either. So please, you all, help me. I guess what I really want is information, especially on the video footage and what could possibly be going on in this house or what could have been going on. Thank you all. God bless. And please take care of yourselves. Alrighty, dear listeners, I have a special treat for you. I had asked all of you all to write a story and send it in to me if you would like. And I am going to end this video with a really awesome story. Let's get into it. A Ouija story written by Joanne W. This happened around 1984 when I was living in Victoria, Australia. I was around 16 years old and myself and four other girlfriends had been at one of their houses swimming most of the day. The backyard was huge and there was also a caravan they kept there for when relatives come to stay, so they'd have extra room. We went inside in the late afternoon. The temperature was cooling down and we wanted to warm up. While we were sitting around a U-shaped lounge and table, somebody decided it would be a great idea to have a seance. My mother had always warned me about these and said that seances are opening doors for evil spirits to come through and that I should never do them. At 16 years of age, I thought I knew better. I wasn't allowed to smoke either, but we were all puffing away on our Winnie Reds back in the day. They were really cheap back then. Of course, we didn't have a Ouija board, so our hostess, Jen, the girls whose house it was, got busy with cardboard, texts, a glass, scissors, and a candle. Soon, we had all the letters of the alphabet, the yes and no cards. We lit the candle, and we're all giggling like the schoolgirls that we were. Diane says, What are we supposed to do now? We all had our fingers on the glass waiting. Tanya starts with, Are there any friendly spirits out there that want to communicate with us? Nothing happened. I'm sitting there thinking, This is bullshit. Tanya asks again, Are there any friendly spirits out there that want to communicate with us? I'm so bored by now that I start pushing the glass toward yes. Everyone starts to freak out a bit, then ask each other if they're pushing the glass. Of course, I say no. Inside, I'm laughing my ass off at everyone starting to panic a little. They ask some more questions, which I honestly don't remember, but it was fun toying around. Little did I know what was about to happen. Due to our young ages, we really didn't know anyone that was dead. So Shelly says, Why don't we try and contact Elvis? I said, <laughs> Yeah, let's do that. So Jen gets up and puts an Elvis cassette tape in the boombox. Yes, this was before CDs. And Tanya starts calling out to Elvis to come forth. The first thing that happened was the sound from the player became all garbled. Then Shelly said, Look, there's three flames on the candle. I shit you not. There was. It had one in the center where the wick was and then a flame either side of it. Diana says, Threes and sixes are the devil's numbers. This is a bad entity. The glass starts sliding all over the table by itself. 
knocking our cardboard letters everywhere. Nobody even had a finger on it after they'd seen the three flame candles. The glass went mental for about 15 seconds before it flew off the table towards the floor, hitting a bench and smashing. That was enough for me. I was closest to the door, so I went to open it. It had a square metal plate with a small latch to open and shut it with. And just as I got close to reaching it with my hand, the latch flew off and I could not open the door. Diane stood up but fell straight back down, saying, I can't stand up. My, my legs are like lead. I, I can't move them. Everyone is panicking, crying, and close to screaming by how high-pitched and frantic their voices were. I was terrified but remained calm on the outside somehow. I've always been the tallest and was very strong and athletic, but my attempts to get Diane to her feet were futile. She was tiny in a sideways sitting position, but even with two of us, we couldn't get her on her feet. The fear and yelling was getting to me, so I gave the door a huge kick and it flew open. In burst daylight, it seemed to instantly quell whatever darkness was in that cavern with us. The fear left. The yelling and screaming stopped. Diane stood up. Elvis started singing again normally on the boombox. Those few minutes of terror were gone. I have never touched a Ouija board again in my life. Years later, when I finally found the courage to tell my mom, she was angry at me for being so stupid. She also advised anyone thinking of doing it to ask for protection first. Ask to be surrounded by white light. My advice is just don't do it. And that, dear listeners, brings a close to these true Ouija stories. Before I go any further, I would like to give a very special shout out to the elite members and the gifted memberships of Back to Ashes. Patty's niece, Samantha Place, Call Me Carter, Corpse Lover, Stephanie McLaren, Denise S., Tina Mee, Luz Crispin, Tammy Slayton, Dova Khaleesi, Edith Smith, Amy Klimko, Sugared Spite, Mrs. Innerscare, and Anita B., you all are the pillars for which Back to Ashes stands on, and I cannot tell you how much I love each and every one of you for supporting this channel. And to our gifted memberships, The Conspiracy Archives, Grimm's Library, Adam Grick, Nat Davies, Decrypted Sleeps, thank you all for joining. I hope you stick around after your 30 days are up. <laughs> And to the subscribers and anyone listening in, thank you so much for supporting the channel. For without any of you, I would not have a voice. If you are sleeping, I hope Slumberland is treating you comfortably. If you're awake, I hope you've enjoyed this selection. Until next time, please take care of yourselves and stay safe out there. Have yourselves a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. Peace, love, and light to you all.